one of the things that we all don't have enough is time. When I started studying and practicing guitar seriously, um, I practiced a lot of hours, but I didn't really know how to do it well. I wanna save you a lot of time, and I wanna show you a few practice routine, a few warm-up exercises that will change your playing tremendously. Let's dive in. Oh, before we dive in, please hit the like button, 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 and click the like button and turn the bell notifications on. Thanks. In order to get the full benefit of this video, I really highly recommend, suggest, to check out all the points because some of the later points are very important. You need to ask yourself what you want from guitar music. That means what you actually need to practice to create the things you really truly love, that makes your heart tick and not that you think you need to know, right? You think you need to know scales, you think you need to know modes, whatever it is, but, and I'm not saying it's wrong, right? It's good stuff, but the question is what you actually, what do you need for your craft? So if you wanna play blues, right? What, what are the elements that I need? If I wanna play jazz, um, So I need to understand what are the frame, framework, framework that is taking place in order for me to actually practice the thing well. That means we need to have clarity and truthfulness to understand what truly makes our heart tick, right? So you don't need to just practice things because you think they're good for you. You need to practice things because you know what you want to do and what are the points that lead to that thing. So if again, you want to play BB King blues, you probably need to know your pentatonic really well, you probably need to transcribe some stuff, etc, etc. And we can talk about these elements, but very important for you to first understand what it is that you really like. Look at the beast in the eye. That means having a truthful, as much as possible, assessment of your playing and what is lacking, right? So if again, you are working on scales and you're working on this G major scale and to be honest, you don't know the notes. You don't really know what is the relationship in G. You can't sing the scale. Well, these are crucial elements that are in music, right? That you can be honest with yourself that you cannot do at this moment, right? And if you practice them, I promise you, you will, you will, you will. You will be able to do them very soon, but you need to be first acknowledging what you can do and what you can do and what is needed for your style. And this will basically give us the tools to create a good practice routine because if you actually face the beast saying, well, you know, I don't understand this chord at all. I don't even know what a major seven is. Great. Then you can explore. But if you're just saying like, yeah, it's kind of something that I know, but it's not really truthful, then it's really hard to progress and understand the information really want you to be able to create something that is really meaningful for your playing. So the next thing I would say, bring things to excellence as much as possible. Don't kind of, you know, carve corners. Do you say that? I guess it's an expression in Hebrew. Um, but basically, like, yeah, just really try and dive in as truthfully as you can. Question, what inspired you to pick up the guitar and play music? Please drop a comment. I want to share and I want to talk about it because I think it could inspire more people and that's really cool. If you're learning a scale, try to really listen and connect and understand how things feel so you can truly connect to the music. Now, I know it takes time, but this is the true, true um, progression that we can do. One of the things that I didn't see when I started playing guitar is notes. So I used to play all these, you know, shape, but I didn't understand what is even happening there. So one of the things that I realized is that I need to know the notes, because if I know the notes on the fretboard, I can actually see the repetition of the information, right? So it's basically this game of tagging. So the first thing I, I started doing is basically saying like, oh, okay, you know, I have this note C, and this note is actually repeated in a few places. So I start finding the octaves of the same note, right? So I'll take again the note C, okay, right? And then I'll find where this note exists on the guitar. <laughs> the note D, right? And I can find it and see, oh, okay, it's also here. The note E, etc. And I can use the overtones if you want, whatever. But the point is, finding all across and seeing the notes, because these notes repeat, right? So if I have the note E, an open string, or here, I can say like, ah, you know, E is part of C major, but it might be also a part of G7, 13, or B flat seven, flat five, or A minor seven, et cetera, et cetera, or A flat seven, flat 13, it's the same E. So if I understand that note and how it functions against different things, 
I can learn music much faster. Another thing I was struggling with that really helped me is uh, I was always afraid hitting or missing a string and kind of playing a random string that I didn't mean to, uh, which I did sometimes when I started playing. And uh, one of the things that I used to practice for some time was kind of separating the right hand and the left hand, right, right and left. And I used to take maybe open string or just kind of like a shape, you can take a bar chord. So I would just basically do this action um, of putting... Um, <laughs> The, the pick on the string and then releasing, preparing, releasing, preparing, releasing, very slow, very releasing. And I wouldn't look on uh, at, the, at the strings, I would just kind of put it, release, put it, release, really slow. And I would try to basically teach my system, my body, my fingers where micro level the strings are exactly at, right? So it's, it's just like I want to be, you know, automatically accessing this information when I'm, not, when I'm not thinking. So I want to teach my fingers and my system as well as I can. So I used to do it really, really slow. I close my eyes and just do that kind of thing and focus as much as I can. And again, if I make a mistake, which we all make mistakes, I'll be like, okay, I'm not focused. Okay. And look that I'm preparing right now, playing, preparing, and the, the motion is playing and right away preparing to the next string. And then there are four permutations, it's like all down, all up, down, up, up, down. I'll give a free PDF here um, so you can grab this PDF uh, on my website just so you can practice it. And there are a few permutations there as well. The idea is again, doing all down or all up and later on a little faster, right? And then some variations on that. Um, and I think it really helped helped and helps me to, to just be comfortable uh, with the different kind of string sets on the guitar because sometimes people just don't pay attention at all to the picking hand but I, I think it's important. I would practice framework every day so I still do it of course and uh, the exercise changes but one of the exercises that I really like is taking scales. Scales is a color so for example we can take the framework of a major scale and I can say for example that I want to talk about G major so I can take one position and I really want to understand what the notes and the sounds are in order for me to do that I would also try and play it in different variations for example I will take the G major scale again understanding the sounds and the notes sometimes I'm gonna sing it so When I'm just kind of singing the G, I'm thinking about so la, si, do, la, mi, fa, li, la, so. right? And I don't need to be again an opera singer. I just I just want to sing it and connect to it as much as possible on this emotional level. And then I would take this scale and try to examine it from different ways. I still do it, right? So I'll take G and say like, okay, can I play it on one string? And I'll just literally try and play it and find the notes. And of course, it's a little bit connected to the exercise that I mentioned before, because if I know the notes, again, those octave exercises around the fretboard, it makes everything easier because I can think about the notes, G, A, B, C, D, E, F sharp, G, and then I just recreate it in different ways. And I will do that exercise on each one of the strings. So again, for example, A, so I'll just do the same idea and thinking about the notes, D, E, F sharp, G, right? And maybe finding better fingering at the times uh, when I don't speak <laughs> and play. But like trying to um, find these things on the guitar, and it's okay to make mistakes as long as we're trying to learn the information in a truthful way. So I would play basically the scale on each one of the strings and I'll try to see it in different permutations and later on in time, which brings me to the next point. Alright, so now I'm going to just play G major scale, chord notes, 8 note, triplet, and 16. Eight notes, triplets. Now, I'm just kind of doing it really fast. What I would do in general is stay in one position just with eight notes until I feel comfortable, just with chord notes, just with triplet, just with 60 notes in each one of the areas on the guitar and then I'll mix them as well. So I'll just kind of like go all across, maybe shift, right? Trying to see eventually the scale is 
as one unit as this kind of sound that is happening in the world and I'm accessing it and it's very important to lock in and again it's a process it's just like trying to focus and every day trying to do it a little bit better but again locking into these grids core notes eight notes triple and 16 is tremendously important and will change how you hear things and how you respond to music I'm going to share one of the key points for learning music and guitar I think this is huge and and it, it was kind of big realization for me so how do we actually practice what are we trying to do right so how do we switch it up so for me, one of the things that got me really frustrated is like I would practice something and I feel like I'm getting better and then after a week or two or sometimes longer, I feel it's like kind of got to this plateau and then I kept practicing it because I was hoping that I'll keep getting better and it didn't really happen. And later on, <laughs> I realized that I don't need to practice this thing again and again and again. I need to let it go. So after I'm feeling this, you know, okay I'm practicing I'm learning and then there's this plateau or like or it slows down right maybe it's still going up a little bit but the the angle is is way um, not as steep I guess as before so then I need to practice something else and it's cool to come back to it later on maybe in a week maybe in a month maybe in six months but you need to try and change the information all the time again music for me is this beautiful ball of light that I'm looking at um, from different angles so whether I'm you know, playing piano or or singing or, or playing guitar and, and doing exercises or writing music or playing gig. I'm trying to learn and highlight different aspects of this beautiful thing. And if I'm just gonna nail this one thing all the time, I'm not gonna see this whole beautiful circle, right? This is kind of the, the difference between this reality of this living thing versus a point of view. A point, in a sense, one point in this huge mass of truth of music so again the point is <laughs> that i'm making from my point of view is try to change the practice routine your practice routine when you feel that plateau and there are so many exercises available right but you have to be flexible with this information all the time and maybe the most important thing of it all so i kind of see music in these two or three elements that are all connected of course so there is sort of like the framework right i'm working on a shape i'm working on a scale i'm working on a a tray that i want to have and then i need to take it to the music so if i'm trying to just work on g major scale okay this is this is what i'm trying to do just playing the shape is not good enough we need we need like literally we have to make music with it so I don't want to solo solo right now, but I just want to go about it in a musical way, right? I want to want to take this information that I'm trying to do, this G major, trying to solo, trying to create something, and right away bring it to this place of creativity, so it doesn't stay in this box of like, okay, I practice my practice, and that's it. No, let's make music today. <laughs> 